um, again, I'm very uncomfortable. Like every day, I'm very uncomfortable. And I wake up at three o'clock every morning, or four, depending. My name is Liz Danzico. I'm gonna be okay. I will be okay. <laughs> My name is Liz Danzico. And I am an information architect, an editor, um, a dog owner. Uh, I am the chair of the new MFA in Interaction Design program at the School of Visual Arts. Um, I have been building, um, designing, researching websites for just about 12 years now. Um, I have uh, fallen into a number of different roles over the past 10 or 12 years, some of which I can explain, some of which I can't. And um, today I find myself in kind of this like triad of experiences, um, as I mentioned, sort of researcher and designer, editor, um, and chair of a department. And, um, and I'm not quite sure how I got here, but I've kind of like really enjoyed um, the experience of kind of getting here. Um, so each day to me is kind of a new experience. Um, each day brings something that I've sort of half planned and kind of half, uh, is kind of half a surprise to me altogether each and every day. Um, and so, so that's, sort of, that's sort of my explanation for it. Um, that's kind of where I am um, today, this morning. I grew up in a small town that doesn't have a very good reputation. Um, I grew up in a small town called Scranton, Pennsylvania, which has, been, which has risen to fame of, of late. Um, and, uh, and for many years, um, I didn't travel. Um, we just, this just wasn't part of the culture of this town. And so I, did, I wanted nothing more when, um, when I kind of got out of this town than to experience something new. And so um, what I did was put myself in a situation where um, I kind of felt a bit uncomfortable, where I was experiencing something that I hadn't experienced before. Um, at that time, when I uh, graduated from... So uh, when I graduated from... Um, college from undergrad, um, I went to teach English in Japan. And, um, and the feeling of um, putting myself in a situation where I felt a bit uncomfortable, um, I realized was really satisfying and rewarding for me. It actually started um, teaching me something about myself that I didn't, um, that, that, that helped me grow. So when I put myself in a situation where I'm actually uncomfortable, it forces me to look at myself in a certain way um, and reveals things to myself um, that um, teach me where the next kind of path is for myself. So that kind of is a, a puzzle piece <laughs> and shows me kind of how the pieces should fit together for the next thing. So when I'm looking for a new opportunity or when I am presented with a new opportunity, if that new opportunity seems like it's going to be uncomfortable in some way um, and make me feel a little bit uncomfortable, I know that it's going to be the, the right thing for me because that sense of feeling uncomfortable in any kind of way always reveals to me something new about myself and teaches me something about myself that will, I know, lead to um, a really rewarding experience that will then sort of lead to this path um, it keeps going and going. You might, what I'm trying to figure out is where the link is between creativity and authenticity and where that, uh, that creative thinking, that intuitive spark, spark you know, that, that point where you say, yes, this is new, this is something that I really, really want to do, that intuition that leads you to this next creative, creative thinking step, not necessarily creative in what you're drawing or what, but just in, in general in life. And if there, you think that there's a, a link between authenticity and creativity. And my, my theory is that people are, who are successful in life, not you know, successful monetarily or et cetera, but the theory is that, that uh, the, the people who have, have found a balance in this particular link between their creative thinking and who they authentically are and know how to listen to that tend to be more successful in life. And I wondered if, um, as a designer in, in this kind of creative field that you are, if you think that there, there is a link and if, if you do or if you don't, just kind of explain that answer. It's a very interesting question, and if you find the answer, please let me know. Um, I can, I mean, I can tell you 
what I am in my, my point of view. I think that you're absolutely right in that what I think you're saying is that if you're able to listen to yourself and you're able to, well, my read is, I don't know, I won't, I won't speak for you. What I believe, um, what I hear you saying is that if you can listen to your in intuition, that you'll always be able to find what's right for you or what's best for you. That's what I believe, or that's what at least has been best for me. So if I can strip away all the logic and all the reasoning and all the rationale, um, and I can actually just follow my intuition, um, that actually works best for me. So um, the, the link between authenticity and creativity is a really interesting connection. Um, so the, that, would, that would presume that what's authentic, right, is sort of what is in your, inside of you, and that what's creative is what you can achieve based on following your instincts, right? So, um, so therefore, <laughs> I'm like in some sort of academic rhetoric class. It's so difficult to, to get it to ask, so I don't mind. And therefore, um, if you can follow your instincts, therefore you can follow a creative path. And I think that you're absolutely right. Um, so, but I think you need, to, you need to establish some sort of pattern for how you can strip away those, the excessive things, because so many things get in the way, right? Um, job offers that have eight signing bonuses and fancy car, you know, I mean, there's so many things that get in the way that distract you from understanding what's, what's right for you, what's intuitive, um, what's sort of clearly um, Right for you. So I think that everybody has to find what is what is that sort of core belief that they have. Um, as I mentioned, I mean, for me, it's it's making myself uncomfortable, and it's like the only thing that I can I can say that's been true to me um, that I really understand about myself in terms of my instincts. Um, I know that something's right for me when it just feels like it has that little bit of sort of uncomfortability that I know feels good. Um, there's clearly a set of skill sets that I look for that I don't have yet, that I sort of follow. And that to me will lead to a new set of creativity for me because I'm able to you know, learn a whole new set of things. But it, the authenticity then for me is that sort of you know, uncomfortability and the creativity then will come from the new set of skills that I can learn. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right in your theory, and, um, but the way to get there for everyone, the formula, if you will, will have to be different for each and every person. Um, but if you can, over the course of your interviews, um, kind of find some common ground and some common denominators, um, that would be just absolutely beautiful and fantastic. And, <clears throat> a benefit to, to so many people because I think that it is really the challenge that everyone faces. Okay. Thank you.